Hello and welcome to the Games Dev Outpost. In this video, we'll be going over an introduction to 3D particles in Godot 3. So, like usual, the first thing we need to do is add a new node. And in the new nodes, you have two different particles. You can have a CPU particle system, or you can have a GPU particle system. For starting out, we're just going to use the CPU particles, because the CPU particles work on both GLES 2 and GLES 3. The GPU particles only work on GLES 3. As soon as you add the particle system, over in your properties, you can see that emitting is turned on and that there's an amount of particles set, but there's nothing showing. As well, we have this warning, and it says nothing is visible because no mesh has been assigned. So the first thing we need to do is go to drawing, and in here we have mesh. If you click on the drop down, you have an option to choose between all of the primitives. You can also use your own mesh, but nine times out of 10, you wanna use the quad mesh. And as soon as you add that, you'll see your particles working. Now we are gonna look at some of these properties, but not all of them. We'll break them up into different videos, but the first one we wanna look at is gravity. Right now, gravity is what's determining how these fall, how these eight particles fall. So if we set this to zero, they're not gonna go anywhere. They're gonna stay right there and they're gonna keep on spawning. And just the same, if we set the value to positive, they'll go up. The next thing to look at is time. So in time, we can set the lifetime of each one of these particles. Each one of the eight particles are living for one second. So we can change this. We can shorten their life <laughs> or we can double their life they can live longer. If they live longer, they're going to go further. With lifetime, we can also set the speed scale. So if we want them to go a little faster, we can do that. One shot. This will make the particle system burst all eight of the particles once. And then the emitting will turn off. When you want to test it again, turn on emitting again. And then it will turn off again. Explosiveness, this determines whether or not all of your particles will spawn one by one, or if they'll spawn at the same time. If we set this to one, they'll spawn all together. Now, if you lower this, they'll start to be offset. And then you can apply a randomness to that explosiveness, and you can apply a randomness to the lifetime. These randomness will offset that initial value in both directions, positive and negative. Now, let's look at drawing one more time. So with local coordinates turned on, if you move this particle system, they're going to stay local to the particle system. If you turn this off, they'll start the trail. Next we have the emission shape. So right now it's just in a point, change it to a sphere. So they'll spawn in a sphere shape, box, they'll spawn in a box shape, etc, etc. Set the amounts of four real quick. Leave this at sphere. And we're going to change the gravity to zero. So next up, we have initial velocity. Some of these properties are actually influenced by other things. So if I set the velocity to one, you'll start to see that these are moving in a direction. And they're moving on the x-axis. If we take a look at direction from here, you can see that direction is set to one. If we set this to zero, they're kind of all spawning in different directions now. Right now, if you kind of look at this, it's kind of going in like a 45 degree cone. So if we increase the spread, we'll get a wider cone. Next up, we have linear acceleration. So we can increase the acceleration of these can make them go faster from their initial velocity. But a notable thing about some of these properties are you can add a custom curve. Instead of just having a zero to one, we can add a new curve. So we add a new curve and we click on that curve. What's happening here is you're setting the value over the lifetime of the particle. Zero to one is the lifetime and then zero to 200 is the potential acceleration. If you right click, you can add a point you can raise it. So we can say, hey, we want to go really fast at the end, right? At the end of their life, right? Or we want it to go fast in the beginning and then we want it to slow down and stop. And 
And the last one that I want to cover in this video is scale. So you can change the scale, geometry, if you want. And then once again, you can also make a curve. So we'll do a new curve, and we'll click in here. We'll add a point, we'll add multiple points. We'll keep this at one, add one more. And what we'll say is at the end, I want you to scale to nothing. Tighten it up, make it happen a little faster. Perfect. And then the last thing I want to go over is billboarding. So since you've added a mesh, you can edit that mesh and you can add a new material. So we're going to add a new spatial material to that mesh and then we're going to edit that mesh. And in here, we want to look at parameters. And in the parameters, we have billboard mode. If you click on this drop down, you have three different options. The one that you do want is particle billboard. So when we enable this, these planes will always be facing us, no matter which angle we look at, they will rotate towards us. What's notable about this is that if you change this to just enabled, it's not actually the same. What you'll notice is none of these planes are scaling, right? They are looking at us continually, but that scale that we set, it will not work with just enabled. Now similar. Y billboard, this will always billboard around the Y axis, never on the top, just on the Y. And also, some of your other properties will not work, like the scaling. You'll notice that these are not scaling at the end. And now they're scaling at the end with particle billboard. <clears throat> All right, guys, this covers an introduction to 3D particles. If you thought this video was useful and it helped, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks, guys.